Hey, it's Andrew Huang. Today, we're going to try and use this little clip musically. And before you get too sad about this piano being destroyed, let me tell you the story. This is a video from Simon the Magpie. Hi, I'm the Magpie. He's a YouTuber and a synthesizer freak like me, and we've been chatting a little bit for the last few months. The situation is something like his in-laws have a company where they help people move and help them get rid of garbage. So Simon quite often actually ends up with pianos in a terrible condition that he needs to dispose of, and he has some fun with them before he does that. And now I'm super pumped because how often do you get the chance to sample a piano being dropped from 20 feet? I'm gonna use this first part to kind of lay our rhythmic foundation. It's just gonna be like kick and snare, you know? Making a beat. Filter that. I gotta separate these on different tracks so we can process the snare and kick sound separately. I'm actually just gonna automate the volume of this so that we can really feel it punch. And when you draw your own volume envelopes, you can really create some cool stuff with um, just making everything a bit more dynamic. So I've got this kind of ramp into the second kick that just adds a little bit more push and pull. I like it. This is our kick track on its own. And this is our snare track on its own. Or I guess that's more of a clap or a snap. And the reason I like making beats with weird samples like this is because you have all these strange little artifacts in there. I place the main beats where I want them to go, but then you end up with all these incidental sounds in the background that add to the groove. So we've got one other sound in this sample to use. It's the ending part where the piano falls over. That sounds kind of snarish to me. Let's just try layering it up with the claps. That sounds nice, and it's slightly off time because of how I just kind of roughly copied and pasted it in, but I really like it. That's sort of like a, a humanizing element being slightly late. And then I've also drawn another volume automation curve to bring up the background noise on the snare track right at the end. Again, for more of that dynamic push and pull. So that's a pretty nice foundation already using just the piano smashing sounds, and I'm just gonna add some more stuff to it now to build up a track. I'm gonna grab a couple little hi-hat sounds to layer up exactly on those background artifacts just to accentuate the groove we already have there. I know that's super subtle, but I think every little thing makes a difference. Now let's add some little ghost snares. I'm feeling like that could be really cool. Gonna use the same sound as before. We're gonna turn it down and we're gonna pitch shift it up. I'm also gonna fade it out pretty quickly, so it's just this nice tight hit. So this is definitely starting to sound like a burial track, and I wanna lean into that. I think the next thing we need on here is a ghostly vocal sample. I'm gonna ask people to give me vocal samples of themselves. Also, you should follow me on Twitter if you're not already, because that's always where I end up doing these weird, weird things. While I wait for samples to roll in, let's add some dark atmospheric chords. I have 82 notifications on Twitter. Let's look at some of these videos. Love is sweet. Ooh. Of the last unicorn. Here's almost over. <gasps> I like my life. The rainbow. In your multitude. Hey, not a map. 
Tap tap darum do. Tell me all the things that you regret. Oh! Andrew I'm really excited about this. I'm gonna chop these vocals up, make them all spacey, drop them into our track, and you can hear it right now. Song, Merry Little Wild Wild Wild.